Everybody loves this Pro Sax from P. Moriat. It's the 67R. And in gold lacquer, it's a real beauty. But if you're upgrading your saxophone to something like this, why wouldn't you consider this saxophone instead? This is the P. Moriat Lebravo. It's their intermediate saxophone. And frankly, it's a little bit too good to be an intermediate in my opinion. But it's a whole load cheaper than the 67R. So which of these two saxophones is the right choice for you? Well, we're gonna work that out in today's video together. So the model I've got here is the 67R GL. GL standing for gold lacquer. It's a beautiful saxophone and it's a pro level instrument that's really well made. There are so many cool features about this which we'll get to in a minute. It retails for about 2,600 pounds in the UK or about 3,250 US dollars. So before we get into the tech side of things, let's have a listen to it. So how does that compare with the lower priced Lebravo? I mean, this sax is about 600 pounds less at 1800 pounds ish in the UK, about 2450 US dollars. There are some technical differences with this sax and the 67 RL, but can you hear any differences in the sound? So which of those two do you prefer the sound of? Let me know in a comment. For me, when I'm playing it, I can definitely hear a difference between these two saxes. They've got their own qualities about them and a lot of the differences come down to the design and the material that the saxophones are made from. So let's dig into that. For me, the 67R definitely has a darker, warmer sound, which I really, really love. P. Moriart say that the bell is bigger on the saxophone too, which helps to give it that big sound. And you can really see the difference when you compare the 67 and the Lebravo side by side. So one of the big technical differences on this particular saxophone is it's got rolled tone holes. That's what the R in 67R stands for. Now all this means is when they draw the tone holes out of the body of the saxophone when it's being manufactured, they also roll the top of the tone hole. So rather than just a, a sharp, filed, flat edge that the pad closes onto, you've got a lovely rolled surface. Now apparently this makes the pad seat better. There's also claims that it makes the saxophone resonate better. I'm not really sure. How can you even tell that? I, I don't know. But it seems like a lot of effort they've gone to there to make rolled tone holes. So there must be a really good reason for it. Either way, this saxophone really does play well. It feels great under your fingers. And I love the resonance of it as well. For me, the big standout on the Lebravo is the neck design. Now, these are technically the same model neck on the 67R and the Lebravo. It's their Super 6 neck. But the Lebravo neck is made from nickel silver. And that gives it a much brighter sound. Because the thing is, after the mouthpiece, it's the neck that really has the biggest impact on the sound. And this particular neck definitely gives the Lebravo a focused, punchy sound. Now also, the body of the saxophone and the bow and the bell are made from gold brass on this saxophone. Now, the result is when I play it, I definitely feel I've got a bit more resistance and I've got a more focused sound on the saxophone. It's quite interesting actually because the tenor that I normally play, my Dave Guadala tenor, that's a gold brass tenor as well. But I don't notice it having that same sort of narrowness to the sound. For me, 
on the tenor, I've actually got a much broader sound. So there's lots of variables there. In terms of key work, both of these saxophones have got exactly the same key system. And it's really, really good. So this is ribbed construction where all of the keys are actually mounted on ribs that are then mounted onto the saxophone. That means it's super sturdy. But most importantly for us, the key work feels fantastic under your fingers on both the Lebravo and the 67R. And I also really like the metal thumb rest, which is on the back of both of these saxophones. Now, there's no denying that the Lebravo is a really attractive looking saxophone. In this satin brushed finish, it really looks fantastic. And coupled with the silver looking neck with the extra engraving on, I think it really pops. And for an intermediate saxophone, this is something really special. It actually feels special to play it and it sounds really interesting. And I think that's why this is so appealing for intermediate players because instantly when you upgrade to this saxophone, you're gonna feel like your saxophone is a lot more exciting to play and the sound that you're getting out of your saxophone is a lot more engaging. Now there's no engraving on the body of the Lebravo, but on the 67R you do get some really lovely engraving around the bell. Now personally, I really like the gold lacquer 67R, I think it's classy and it looks really, really beautiful. But you've actually got some other options for finish with the 67R. So it also comes in a vintage finish for about an extra 100 pounds or a classic cognac lacquer for about 2840 or 3500 US dollars. And I actually borrowed these saxophones from Jim down at sax.co in London. And he was telling me that the most popular 67 model by far is the unlacquered model. Now that's a bit more expensive at about 3100 pounds or nearly 4000 US dollars. It does look awesome though. Now I should say both these saxophones are super easy to play. I found the tuning to be excellent and I could easily pop right up into the Altissimo, which is brilliant. But to be honest with you, they're both really well made saxophones so you kind of expect that. I'm kind of struggling to find anything that I really don't like about these saxophones. Oh, there was one thing that did surprise me though. There are no adjustment screws on the back of the right hand stack, which I thought was quite surprising because that's a standard thing you'd find on Yamaha saxophones. Even my Dave Guadala tenor has that, and it does make it easier when you go to get your saxophone serviced or repaired. Now the Lebravo comes with this suitcase style case. Very, very sturdy, really well made. And I love the fact it's got these massive pockets in here to stick in your music or your bits and bobs, pens. Really great if you're going to school or college actually. And, oh, look at these, some goodies in here. Neck strap, shoulder straps, cleaning cloth. Oh, and a little care package too with some cork grease and, and a reed. Looks like a Van Doren reed, but it's not, it's a P. Moriat reed. And another cleaning cloth. I should also say that this bag has got shoulder straps on the back too, which is fantastic if you're doing the commute. Now the 67R comes with this more shaped case, which I think also looks pretty cool. It's still got the care package in the front pocket here with all your bits and bobs like the other one but i do like this little extra pocket and there's a bigger pocket on the back you could easily get your saxophone stand and some music and stuff in there too so who are these saxophones for to be honest with you i think anybody who's looking to upgrade from their beginner saxophone into an intermediate saxophone or a pro saxophone could do worse than these two choices. These are both fantastic saxophones. And I'll bet there's plenty of pro players that are actually playing this Lee Bravo because it's a really interesting, colorful saxophone to play. So I think you're in safe hands with either of these choices. Which one will I go for? Look, I do like the 67R because I think it's really interesting. But there's even another model that I haven't mentioned today, and that's the influence version of this 67R, the 67RX. I think the unlacquered finish of the Influence model looks fantastic and the little metal touches on the keys look amazing. But I've got some quick advice for you about choosing saxophones because if you do get the opportunity, you really should go to a music store where you can try a bunch of saxophones. I love sax.co in London. It's like an Aladdin's cave. There's so many saxophones there to try. And the lovely thing is you can get some good advice from the staff there and then you can actually try a bunch of different things to see how they feel. What you're really looking for these days is a saxophone that lights you up and makes you feel excited about playing saxophone. Because the fact is there are so many great saxophones on the market today that are all well made, well built, they're gonna last you for years and they are gonna allow you to do whatever you want. What you're looking for though is the saxophone that when you pick it up and you play it, you think that really gets me excited. I hope one of these gets you excited too. I hope you found this useful. I'll catch you on the next lesson.